Council. All right, there you go. Did you get your free Mary book yet? No, no we haven't. Thank you. There you go. I have some more. Your free Mary book? This black man was just sitting there by himself, and the Lord impressed me to go to him. I didn't mean to give a Bible study, but it wound up to be a study in the Bible that went on for about an hour, off and on. And um, then the man, as we were standing there, we, we, we arose from the seats we were sitting at and went to the gates and to the fence and was looking at the huge screen that the Pope and, and President Clinton was on. And, um, things really started clicking again. This man really started grasping what we were saying. I opened up my little Bible to Revelation 13 and I started from verse 11, the image of the beast. And I touched back to the first beast and the second beast and he was making a parallel. And I said, do you see what's happening here? He says, yeah, this is really amazing. And he started telling me how the, how the Lord guided him over here that morning. And he believed that it was for this reason, problems of God. And he was really encouraged. He said, you know, you're going to write to us. I always tell people when we put our address on the books or whatever, you know, if you write to us, we'll send you videos and other books. And I'm really encouraged that he will. Pray for him. His name is Michael. I also told him Michael is also a name for Jesus, too. <laughs> and he was encouraged with that. And Tuesday, we was with a priest. His name is Father Bo. And um, he was... Um, He's from New Jersey, <laughs> so he had the accent and everything, and he, he was a funny character. He just kept going on and on about uh, the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother, she's, she is so much to me. She, she is what makes me go. She, she gets me up in the morning, and she works with me through the day, helps me to make it through the day, and on and on and on. And I couldn't believe it. I said, I said well, that's, that's interesting. I said, she means more to you than Jesus. Oh, she is. He wouldn't. He didn't answer the question, but he just went on and on and on about about how precious uh, the mother Virgin Mary was, and you know, he just. I um, mean, it was like she was the the center of his life, you know. And I was really saddened by that, um, making her out to be like the Redeemer. Um, she didn't. I mean, the Virgin Mary was a. A precious woman, she bore the Christ child and she went through a lot and all that, but she was not the Redeemer. There was one time when uh, Danny and I were up at the very front of the, of the doors of the Coliseum and there was a gal that was uh, following us and uh, was very aggressive and uh, yelling to the people that this is anti-Catholic literature, this is hate literature, uh, where the devil uh, grabbing the books out of the hands of the people and just on us, just constantly, just right up to us and uh, just going back and forth, back and forth. Um, and that got really, that got pretty intense for a while. I was actually starting to have concerns that this, this lady might be able to, to whip up some hostility amongst the people in the crowd. And the biggie is, it functions on tradition rather than scripture. The Bible doesn't say to confess your sins to a priest. It doesn't support celibacy. Okay? Sunday worship, I don't believe, is biblical. And they teach other things of that nature that I believe purgatory is not in the scripture. And so I just try to get people to say, what do you want to go by? The Bibles or the traditions of the land? So why would you, why, by coming here with so many people who are sort of turning away from you and not wanting a book, why is it worth it to travel all the way from Lodi? Because I believe they're good, true Christians here that run the danger of being deceived mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by false teachings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Take, and, and these teachings, what, what, what I, I believe is, see the Vatican is a very political, religio-political entity. Okay, and the Bible mentions that in scripture and in Bible. Hey, so, are you having fun? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's, it's very heavy. It's, it's a solemn work, the most solemn work I believe ever entrusted to man. I believe Christ is coming soon. And I believe that people need to know that they're going to ultimately end up making a choice between the Bible, specifically the Ten Commandments, as given by 
by God and the Ten Commandments as changed by Rome. They deleted the Second Commandment. They took the Fourth and moved it to Three, took the Tenth and divided it into Two. And they give you this into the Catechism as the Ten Commandments. How can a mere mortal, the Pope, change the divine law of God? Excuse me. It was great. A great feeling of it was a great excitement, feeling. Peace. of peace, U unity. of love, peace, love, and unity. Unity. Yes. Unity? Yes. I've heard that word a lot this weekend. What are your feelings on that? That's what it means to be Catholic. It's yes. Universal. Universal. You saw every race, every na nationality. You saw people's all different kind of colors and languages. That's what it means to be Catholic. Unified. Unified. Yeah, this is how we came. How was the spirit among our troops? It was, it was one spirit because we were led by one God. Amen. We, it was very well orchestrated, very well organized because God, our God, is a God of order. That's right. He's not the author of confusion. We had very good leadership. Very small, small group, which I think uh, attributed greatly to our success. Not only beforehand but in the field we had radio operations back and forth from the van to the field and we had diversity we had people from walks of life we had people from around the world the camaraderie here has been truly of the Lord it's been really close there's no bickering no arguing no fighting and I believe that this work truly has been of the Lord. He, mm -hmm. has, he has organized this whole project. It's been very organized. The Lord has provided for us in every way. You know, the Lord has told us that when we work for man, man will let you down. But when we work for the Lord, He provides the best for us. Amen. Oh my, it's, it's been a camaraderie that uh, people are, have been have helped one another with their little problems whatever somebody might lose something or you know we've you know borne one another's burdens and it's a closeness of being here together with the same suite of rooms and uh, it's just everything has been made as easy as possible so that our hearts and minds can be on the work oh I think it was incredible that we could uh, go that do that much work mental work physical work without much sleep very little food, but it was sort of like a high. I mean, we were all encouraging each other, much prayer, much self-searching in our own hearts. And uh, I think it's an experience that everybody should be out doing in some form or other. Maybe they can't do exactly this, but everybody can go around and pass a little tract out somewhere and witness to somebody and pray while you're witnessing. Some of God's work has been done, Amen. for one, and it was also a blessing that I could be a part of that. Um, we were against adversarial conditions, and the Lord saw fit that He could take a few people and do a mighty work, passing out so many pieces of literature, and hopefully uh, many souls will be uh, won over. You know, their minds will be uh, converted, their hearts will be inspired to seek the truth. In keeping with his message of brotherhood and tolerance, Pope John Paul presided over an ecumenical service at the Cathedral Basilica. Your Your visit to St. Louis and to our metropolitan community is moving swiftly toward its end. This hour of your visit is special also for many people outside the Catholic community. With willingness and graciousness, our brothers and sisters of the ecumenical an interreligious community 
have accepted the invitation to come together this evening with your holiness. Isaiah. I read the first